The creative rant. We're, we're live. live. So today we're here with Heather Files. She is the founder and owner of Vamp, which is a makeup school here in Orlando, Florida. Yep. And so what's the deal with Vamp? Uh, the deal with Vamp, well, we're a makeup school. Mm -hmm. uh, we specialize in teaching special effects makeup and beauty makeup um, to individuals who want to do that as a profession so uh, whether it be working in a shop or applying makeup um, on clients for beauty jobs working with photographers um, yeah so yeah but it's like more than just makeup though right yeah especially the effects program we do a lot of fabrication so it's a lot of shop work mm -hmm. a lot of mold making and sculpting and lots of hands-on stuff so gotcha yeah we wanted to do more than just teach how to apply it we wanted them to be able to you know, be able to make the stuff that goes into, you know, prosthetic application. We wanted them to be able to actually know the entire process of it. Cause honestly that just helps your craft too. If you know, like the background of what you're doing. So, yeah. Gotcha. Yeah. So do you do any like history or? Um, yeah. So the two effects teachers at the school, uh, Brian Mahoney and Michael Gore, um, they, that's a good name to have as a, uh, special real last name. This is yeah, really awesome. Gore. Yeah. He gets that's really good. salty because um, Tim Gore, who's also a makeup artist, that's not his like real last name. But he Michael's just made like, it up. I mean, I don't know if he made it up. He I don't really know well, the story. Yeah, but yeah, yeah, I mean, he like, you know, like we were talking about stage names earlier. Yeah. I don't know if he like, whatever. But Michael Gore's real name is Gore. But yeah, they do, uh, they do go over, you know, like icons in the makeup world. And, um, you know, they want, they want people to know their their shit basically yeah. they don't want to, we don't want to be sending people out into the world without that you know a good basis of what they're doing well it, it also comes it's kind of like what we talk about with uh, before you learn how to do something you should know why you're doing it mm -hmm. and that's it's just making sure that your craft is at least protected with you know here's the history here's where we've come from where we've come a long way since Lon Chaney like gluing his yeah. face with weird gasoline gasoline <laughs> like you know we we a good example of the tin man with yeah. all that like silver on him and yep. how yeah. toxic that was and stuff yeah yep. i mean yeah we've definitely come a really long way and that's like one of the things that we were really looking to do when we opened the school was um teach like modern techniques in what we're doing so we're making sure that we keep up with you know, modern uh, materials, things that are actually being used in the industry, not just stuff that we put in the curriculum and then kind of left to collect dust. Yeah. So. Well, and, and it's funny because we, so as photographers, we work a lot with makeup artists. And when we first started out, it was a lot of like, hey, you're a makeup artist. Yeah, I'm a makeup artist. I, I've done makeup or whatever, right? And, and then once you know the difference between a professional makeup artist and a makeup artist, um, to me, it comes down to even how they just handle their makeup. Like if they're putting lipstick directly on there, there's things that you don't think about as far as like health and and yeah. just the hygiene of it. And then like now when I look at it, I'm like, oh, you're just a makeup artist. Yeah. Like, you get what I mean? So yes, I, I do. Yeah. Uh, it's And I think a lot of that just comes with honestly working experience and like being on set and just absorbing and picking up tips from the other artists you're working around and that helps a lot you know yeah. but obviously going to school and having those mentors to kind of push you in the right direction as far as that goes obviously is going to help too i mean so you're you're a you're a technical school or a technical college yeah no we're not a college we are a post-secondary institution post-secondary so we are a <laughs> diploma granting institution yeah um so, but yeah, we, I which mean, it would be weird if it was like a college. Yeah. I think. Yeah. It's like, I don't know people. If someone was like, I went, you know, to a makeup university, I'd be like, Oh, like a university. <laughs> well, like, it just seems like it's like, I don't know. That'd be weird. Wouldn't it? Maybe I, it's just cause I'm not used to well, thinking of it think like you need that. To, the, I think the difference is with the university, it's like several years and with like a skilled trade, I don't necessarily think all 
I mean, I don't want to like blanket statement and then people be like, oh, wow. Well, no, I, I know but what like, you're saying. Like a lot of it is hands on experience. It's like you need a small amount of training and then you kind of have to just keep working. And yeah. it takes like it takes like, uh, but that's the same like clock everything. hours basically of like. Yeah, I mean, it is. That's true, right? I mean, well, like it's weird because like it would also be weird to me if there was a carpentry university. Like, yeah, well, that, that'd happens? be weird. Are there schools for that? There should be. That, it, like, I mean, uh, but yet I, I've already kind of changed my mind because it's like if there's any school that should be four years long, it's like it's in like a craft. I, like but, carpenters. But see, but see, I think then then you have industries that disagree with that because I feel like um, so so I have a film degree. And mm -hmm. it's a degree that I've never showed anybody. No mm -hmm. one's ever asked me for it. They've never said, let me see your, you know, your certificate of completion for film. Yeah, and that's true. And it's, it's um, not knocking like the, the colleges or the post-secondary institutes because I think it's important. But where I think it needs to stop is, and, and you've already said that you need to continue after this, the practicing of this craft. Mm -hmm. I think people go to that and then they leave there thinking that that's it. That's all I can do. And and I'll, I'll, I'll kind of bring up this example. And I think I read about this, but uh, the tattoo industry, there was a um, there was a trade school opening up for tattoos. Mm -hmm. And the tattoo industry was like, we won't hire any trade school taught uh, trained tattoo artists. Interesting. They won't work in our shops. And the reason is because their industry is so heavily rooted in apprenticeships that they don't want it, right? They have their own cruel, whatever, you know, methods of, of training these tattoo artists. Um, and, the, and they protected their industry. But I think with, and, and that's, I mean, you know, they're, they have the health issues and stuff like that. But I think there's something to, to go in, learn the foundation so that when you go to an apprentice or an apprenticeship and you get someone to apprentice you, what's the, it's the, uh, you know. Yeah, no. I the think apprentor. A, uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, apprentice. The apprentice. Uh, you know, you, you have a little bit of that foundation to kind of help you move a little bit further along. It's more personal that way, for well, sure. Well, and you don't learn one way. You learn or like so when I was in high school, I got offered a job for editing and I turned it down because I wanted to go to, to school and learn how to edit. And my reason was I didn't want to learn their way of doing it, whether right or wrong. I just felt like I wanted to learn how the industry and then the history of that. So mm -hmm. I think like there's an importance to go to it. But then there's also like that. You know, you gotta you gotta take it from there, and you can't just rest on what you've learned. You have no, to absolutely you have not. to enhance on it. And that's it and... something that we like really want for our students is I encourage them afterwards. You know that everybody's gonna go through a hiatus after they get out of school. Yeah. I, I mean, unless I guess you know people get get through college and then they'll have like a job maybe like set up that they know they're going into. But a lot of people get out of school and then it's like there's kind of this job hunt hiatus, especially for like my, you know peers like when I got out of college I know a lot of my friends were having a hard time finding the, a job and it was just like a, a period of rest and I think people will go to trade schools or they'll go to hair school or they'll go to makeup school and they won't find a job immediately and it's like well oh well and they just I'm done yeah. yeah and they just give up which is like not the way it's literally the exact opposite of how you will find a job doing that thing is yeah. by yeah. stop you stop doing it in your free time you know if you, if you want to do makeup sculpt in your free time yeah. do personal projects buy a you know a block of clay sculpt one thing take pictures of it or, or push it back up do it again you know it's like keep working towards it keep practicing yeah. or how about start looking while you're in school yeah i mean that's like good they, too, they don't even hit the ground running you know and the other which i understand yeah. yeah i didn't either when i was in school just because yeah. i don't know it was this feeling like this is the last of school. <laughs> Live it up. Like, yeah, I really did feel like that. I should, I look back and it's like, man. Well, after college, I did the same thing. I wasted like a bunch when of I, time. Yeah, when I graduated from Duke, I did not, I didn't want to look for a job. I was like, um, I'll figure it out. Yeah. What did you go to college for yourself? Um, I got a degree in psychology and visual arts. And then I 
Um, Psychology and visual arts? Mm-hmm, I like, double majored. Okay. Yeah. Gotcha. And then I... Seems um, like a good combo. That's just a weird combo. Okay, like, well, I thought I wanted to go into it's advertising. It's very like Clockwork Orange. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Clockwork Orange? I hate that movie. It freaks me out. I don't like it. Uh, yeah, the Singing in the Rain, whenever I hear that song now, I, like... I can't with that movie, you know, because yeah. that's like, uh, whatever. Anyways, uh, no, I actually thought I wanted to go into advertising. Mm-hmm. Wait, what's I, the singing in the rain thing? I feel like I'm missing out on something now. Isn't that like the rape scene and they like the couple? and they Oh, in Clockwork singing? Orange? Yeah. I didn't really get through that movie. Good. It's, I, I don't remember the song. I don't. I was thinking I think of it, isn't that it one. singing in the rain? It probably. I, saw I was that movie thinking once. of like singing in the rain. And no, I, was like, I love a rape the movie scene singing in the <laughs> Take that back. I was like, I don't remember a rape scene in Singing in the Rain. No, it's in Clockwork Orange. It's too creepy well, for me. Yeah. 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 For, they didn't think know. it was at the time. Yeah. But it is but, now. And I was like, wait, did like, I? <laughs> I was dancing in the rain. Yeah. yeah. Well, singing in the Rain is great. No, it's a feel good hit. Yeah. They were yeah. Playing, yeah. yeah. It's a great But movie. I thought the meaning had changed and it was like representing <laughs> rape. I th- I it's think like that's the Baby the It's Cold Outside I mean, song. I think that's the song. Yeah. Like, <laughs> baby it's cold outside now people are like that's a super that's rapey, rapey a super song. rapey song <laughs> like <laughs> she's won't, asked him he, to leave like 10 times and he so won't let her leave trying to leave he, that yeah and he's like no you have yeah. to stay it's i like, don't know very, like i don't get into that i'm just saying that it's funny <laughs> i like i, I think that it's, it's like <laughs> funny as much as it is uh it's good that our society has shifted in the way we think about that kind but i of think stuff. it's funny that people are like upset about that song like you know that's a rape song right and it's like well not like legit. Well, they it's were, not like a. Le- it's not like a. Like, yeah, but then there's songs so, like bl- blurred lines, which yeah, is pretty rapey. That's like that's a that's rape a song. dark. Yeah. That's like a oh. That's uh, that's just blurred. Into it. It's yeah. a blurred line. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I've never listened to the lyrics. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty bad. It's, no, yeah, I know. Yeah, it's not positive. Yeah. yeah. No, Hashtag me too. You know? Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, <laughs> What were we talking about? Oh, oh! I wanted to get into advertising. Gotcha. And then I, one of my last classes I took in school was called the Ethics of Advertising, mm-hmm. and I was like, "Welp, I don't want to do that anymore." Hmm. It made me feel like very um, conflicted about it. Mm. So I was like, oh, "I." That's pretty much what I wanted to get into when I went to film school, mm-hmm. and then. I, I mean, of course, I wanted to make movies. But my even when I was in college, it was like, okay, my realistic approach to this will be that I get into advertising. I'm going to be a director. Yeah, I want, well, I'm going to be a director when I get out of college. Yeah. No, I was never really like that just because I know that that's pretty much impossible. Unless you get some sort of Willy Wonka ticket with free money of you cool. know, somebody. I want one of those. Yeah, yeah, that would be great. But um, And then I found out very quickly that advertising has changed i didn't really mind the ethics part i didn't really care about that so much i don't know like kind of um it really bothered me the idea of like advertising toys to little kids or like you know um i think food's more malicious fast food yeah or and and, i mean but you could still be in advertising and be like you know oh that's heather like, what are you here for? Okay, good. As long as you're not a fast food chain. Like, things you won't advertise for. <laughs> Wait, you think I would... I, so, I have to get to a point in my advertising that I get to pick and choose and be like, no. Oh, I no, you can just do your, it from the beginning. I reject your money. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I won't advertise for you. That's what you should do in the first place. Yeah. So. People do that. People do that. Yeah. But that's hard to do when you're starting out. Uh, no, yeah. I, I think it's... No, yeah. it's it's not. It's hard to it's hard to make that choice, but it's like because in, in photography it's the same way. When we got into photo- when I got into photography, it was like I'll shoot anything. Mm-hmm. Weddings, the worst, right? Weddings, they're the <laughs> worst. The, oh, oh, the weddings worst. are the worst. I thought yeah. you were saying weddings, comma the worst, like the worst of weddings. <laughs> like, yeah. <laughs> clarify. The first wedding I shot was in a orange grove. Like it it wasn't it wasn't fun, but. I think if I would have just taken the time to not do that stuff, I would have filled it with other stuff that I wanted to do. But it was, I have to pay the bills. I have to pay the bills. And then once you start chasing the dollar, all you're doing is allowing, you're allowing your clients to de- to to define your work. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So as opposed to me just taking that time 
and defining my own work and putting in the extra work for quote free, then me saying this is what I have to show you. But for years it was like, always. But yeah, man. But it could also that could also be part of the lesson learned because if you went the other way and didn't make any money, then you might be saying, oh. Well, if I had just, you know, done some money jobs, I, I would have had the yeah, money to continue. Especially you small can flip. businesses, you it don't can... always have the option to be so picky in the beginning. But then, but the thing is, is that that's a that's a slippery slope and a hard hole to dig yourself out of because yeah, and I guess for eight anybody... years, for eight years, all I had was a portfolio of weddings, and I didn't want to do weddings, but they kept paying the bills. Yeah. So, and I'm saying from an ethics standpoint. If you just stood up and said, I'm not doing this, this is my line, then as opposed to being like, oh, right, well, I'll do it for money. What's worse? I mean, doing like. I mean, the society we <laughs> live in is very light. Like, it's I mean, well, I mean, capitalism. I, it goes back to what we were talking yeah. about before we started. Well, this, I mean, I've but... been dirt poor and I've turned down filming porn. Yeah. It's like my hard line. Or it's like, no, I'm not doing that. And I don't even really know why. I've I've seen like some jobs advertised on Craigslist that are like makeup artists for yeah. like adult films and stuff. Yeah. And I don't know. I don't know if I could do it. Oh, that's but you got to pay the bills. That's the thing. Yeah. And that's offered, my point. I was offered like, like 10 grand one time to film a porn for 2 days and I was like what? 10 grand and I had no money. Yeah. I had like $200 total. Like and rent was due in like two so, weeks. So so and I was that like, that is like a I was would like, you rather? And I was like, for the ages. And I was like, on one hand, Sylvester Stallone was in a porn. <laughs> he still made it. He was. Yeah, it was like a soft core thing. No. The Italian Stallion for real. Yo, so that's so, a real thing. But no, yeah, that was his name in it in a movie. Wow. Yeah, or no, the movie was called that. Yeah. Yeah. But so so it's okay to turn it down if you're ethically. Well, that's what we're talking about. Ethically, I know, I know. Ethically. But what I'm saying is like, but back to my point, mm -hmm. it's not okay to turn it down if you just don't want to do that kind of work. No, that's okay too. Yeah. But, but what I'm saying is like, I I think I'm that just there's saying that. It's hard. It's not as easy. It's not I as agree. black and white as just. I still well, wonder if I should have taken that job. I think it's ten grand richer, or you would have bought ten grand worth of crap, and I know. you wouldn't have known. Would the difference. it have mattered? Yeah. No. There's just something about it. I don't know what it is. Yeah. I don't have anything against porn. Porn's great, but I don't like. <laughs> I don't want to get in there and be like. You know, it's like you, know, you don't want to uh, see behind the curtain, so you don't to speak. Because you don't want to no, see. I don't want to be behind line. the curtain. It's not just looking. <laughs> <laughs> Other people are looking, and it'd be me. But that's like Caleb. A <laughs> Caleb doesn't want to see how the sausage is made. Yeah. <laughs> that's, yeah. <laughs> that's really what it comes. Uh, I don't want to see how the sausage. And that's another is made. industry, man. When you, I feel like when you butchers, when you go into that. No. Uh -oh. yeah, like industry. the porn industry, I felt like if I took that job, it'd be like, what are you doing tomorrow? I got another ten grand. What do I you just think? Feel you're, like the money it's like a stop. slippery slope, and With then you're porn, like, a I think a lot of times it is. Director, yeah. you're not a director. You would be just uh, well, camera I mean, guy at first, yeah. Cameraman number one. No, Caleb I think that that is one of like those industries where if you've a lot of people that are in it, they they stay. I don't, the I don't know anybody is awesome. in it, so I can't. I know some people, and it's like. I don't, we know makeup artists. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they make really good money, and the ones that make prosthetics for yep. it too. Like giant, like yeah, butts and all kinds of stuff that are what? fake. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. You guys are teaching me something. Yeah, yeah. That's like a that's I don't know a pretty that's big like, industry. Yeah. Well, I've heard. Well, so, but that's the thing. So if somebody you know paid like called you up and was like, "Hey, oh, I couldn't we'll do it." Give you ten. But that's grand just because I'm like an old prude. Okay. You know. Yeah, I don't like. I don't I get have anything. Too freaked out. Me. I mean, I'm already like a, a Depends tiny on squirrel person that I'm like all over the place all the time. And I like think about things way too much. So yeah. if I had to do that, I would just. Yeah. It would be burned into my brain for me. You know, I'm glad other people do. Yeah. That. Keep yeah. it going. Oh, I don't care about it. That's the thing. That's what really bugs me is I like if I don't care about other people doing it. Then why do I care about myself doing it? Like, I don't know. If somebody came in here now and was like, hey, I'll be give you 10 grand to uh, film porn, it'd still be like, oh, man. 
That'd be nice. I mean, I, there's a lot of things you could say that for. That's like, I don't care if other people do it, but I don't want to do it. You know. <sighs> yeah, I guess. But that's like the biggest one. I'm not me. into like extensive body piercing, but like I don't care if other people do it, but I don't want to do it. Yeah. You know what I mean? There's a bunch of things that's like, oh, good. You do that. You do the hell out of it. That's true. So, yeah. uh, not to get off the porn topic, but to kind of get <laughs> oh, off the porn. Topic, yeah. <laughs> uh, before I went to film school, I wanted to be a makeup artist. Okay. So, uh, but I, I had a really close friend and he went to makeup school. He went to Joe Blasco. And then um, I was like, well, I'll go to film school. And then, you know, we'll, these the big grand duo. ideas. Yeah. yeah. You'll do the makeup, I'll do the filming. <laughs> <laughs> you know, here, this is where we we'll at. Yeah. <laughs> it would be awesome if that's how things worked too, because one of my very close friends from Duke works in LA, and he just worked on it. Nice. He's working on the new Child's Play, and yeah. I'm like, so call me. Yeah. But it's like I don't think he's like high enough on the uh, the food chain. Yeah, the food chain yeah. yet. So. So when I when I was going to f- uh, film school, I, uh, you know, I since I loved makeup i you know i studied it loved you know everything about it and loved dick smith right Mm -hmm. and i was like oh i wonder if dick smith has a website and what did he do dick smith did uh the exorcist very he's he basically revolutionized old age makeup okay right and uh you know for the people who are just listening (laughs) dick smith google him look him up imdb he's like the godfather yeah Yeah, I know who he is. I know what he's done. Caleb doesn't know who he is. <laughs> he said, "Who is that guy?" Yeah. I've never even. I don't even watch movies. Yeah. So, um, I went to his website, and you know, he was doing like he was doing makeup schools before makeup schools were doing makeup schools, kind of thing. Mm-hmm. He was doing like a thing through the mail, whatever. So, uh, it says on his website, if you have a question for Dick Smith, send it to the webmaster, and we'll give it to Dick Smith. And I just, I, I just called bullshit. It's like, there's no way. There's no way, right? So I make up, just make up a question. And the question was, uh, do you feel that people should, have, should go to a makeup school in order to become a makeup artist? That was it. I made it up, right? So uh, I get an email back from Dick Smith. And he's was like- Was it Dick Smith at AOL.com? I think it might have been an no. AOL. I think it may have been an AOL thing. No, like. I just picture this being a very long is, time ago. So it is. So. It's really it is. Long time yeah. It was like 2002. Okay. Yeah. All it right. definitely wasn't last year. I don't know. 2002 doesn't feel like that long ago. And then I'm like, oh. It was. This is like 20 something years ago. Uh, okay, math. Uh, <laughs> it's it not that long 16. ago. 16. Yeah. Oh. Don't take. No, oh, okay. Years anyway, away I told you. Makeup here. artist. Okay, okay. <laughs> Makeup artist. So he writes me and he says, I don't understand your question. Please, uh, here's my phone number. Give me a call before dinner. Okay. Before dinner. <laughs> yeah. And I shit you not, I was like, oh, my God. Like, I'm freaking out. I'm like fangirling. I'm like, oh, my God. Dick did you Smith. call? Hell, yeah, I called. What did he answer? So he picks up and he and talks to me for 45 minutes over a fake question. Like, I knew the answer. I knew the answer. Like, what is a guy who runs an online school going to tell me whether or not I should go to school? Like, he's going to say, yeah, you should go to school. But the guy talks to me for 45 minutes. He tells me about his son who, like, his son wanted to become a makeup artist but then didn't. And then, like, he's just finding his way. And he's like, you know, you remind me of my son. You know, he's lost. Yeah. He's and, lost. and now, you know, <laughs> now he's one of those grip guys. Yeah. <laughs> or his son started doing lighting or something like that. But the guy talks to me for 45 minutes. And at the end... I was like, hey, like, I just, I have to confess to you, I totally made that up just because I didn't think that you would oh like. Oh my God, that was so, you came clean? Yeah, because I, well, I appreciated the fact that he took the time, took 45 minutes before his lunch or his dinner <laughs> and like talked to me on the phone. I didn't. I bet I he didn't... was wearing a very chic turtleneck when he said I bet he was you. sitting, like, I just picture him sitting in his study surrounded by busts. Of like like monsters that he's created. No, I like to picture with my like Dick a Smith. skull pipe. No, no, no. And he's like, uh, let, see? let no, me my, tell you, Richard. my Dick Smith is more casual. <laughs> like, he's got on a, a turtleneck and he's just in the kitchen and his floor is like linoleum, regular old kitchen, 
And he's on a phone that's got a very long cord. And he's wearing like and a he's cardigan. Walking around, you know? <laughs> like David Lynch or something. He's no, he's like the he's like the Mr. Rogers of the makeup world to me. Like that's what he looks <laughs> well, like. Well, I mean, after that forty five minute conversation, I would assume it's kind of Mr. Yeah. Rogers y. I bet he was super nice. So I told him so, I was like What did he say when you were like I lied? He was oh, like Well, I was like listen Thanks a lot. I was and then Yeah, he, he was you. like, You're an asshole. <laughs> Put me on the do not call list. Oh, I didn't know I was speaking with a liar. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we have standards. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You're ethically wrong. Yeah. <laughs> so I tell him, you know, I, I made up the question because I didn't really believe that the website, like I could actually get in touch with you. But I am interested. Everything we talked about is real. It's just the question. And I was like, but I have to thank you because you're Dick Smith. Like. I haven't bought anything from you. I've never taken a course of yours. And uh, you just spent all this time talking to me. And he was like, yeah. He's like, I'll talk to anybody. It's He's like, I'm just a makeup artist. Like, he was so humble. Oh, man, that's cool. So just down to earth. And it stuck with me. And, and like, I have always thought about that. Like, oh, my God. Like, so, like, when I get emails from people hey, I saw your work online or I did this or I did that. I'm like, oh my God, like I have to take a minute before dinner and I have to respond me, to this. But, you know, just not be, yeah, just not at six because yeah. that's my dinner. But it was so cool. It was awesome. Can you fix that thing behind you? That Let's... action figure thing? It's crooked. It's driving me nuts. Uh, okay, I was listening Thanks. to you the whole time. I was he, wasn't. he wasn't. I, I was <laughs> looking <laughs> past him. <laughs> <laughs> um, he wasn't. So why did you decide... To get into makeup? Um, that's a good question. I was it a decision or was it a calling? Oh, God. Uh, you don't have to answer that. Yeah, that's... Uh, <laughs> felt an urge. Cor- the Sorry. corn factor felt was too urge. high. But no, I, um, when I got out of school, I was doing like a marketing internship, just pretty basic. I was like making computer graphics in like Photoshop and stuff. So, Because that's lame. No, it's no, and it's not. Kidding. It's just it wasn't what I was wanting to do. Yeah. And um, it, anyways, I really liked everybody I worked with. It wasn't anything like it was just it wasn't what I wanted to wake up every morning and drive. Was that to. an agency? No, it was not. It was at like a nonprofit, so um, which was fine. It was only a couple months, but while I was there, I was like, I got to figure out what I want to do every single day. And I always like doing makeup, and I like doing makeup on my friends, and I, you know, had pretty decent skills in it and I've always loved art so I was like I need to do something artistic and that's what I decided to do and then um you know I've been at Universal this was my eighth season there and then um for what f- for Halloween Horror Nights and gotcha. Grinchmas and Mardi Gras and all all the marquee events that they do there cool um, Grinchmas man it's probably talking about be- something I didn't even know was a thing me neither no, like until that, just now. Well, that and then like. Wait, you didn't know it was a thing till right now. No. Oh, it's yeah. fun. Grinchmas. It's cute, yeah. Okay, is it good? Have you ever seen a who? Is it going to be? Have you ever seen a who? I have. Is that like what that's a live, for? Like a live? Yeah. Uh huh. Yeah, and you know, yeah. well, in you at Universal. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's like yeah. the Jim Carrey <laughs> Grinch yeah. version. Is it, I bet it's going to be like popping this year because the are they Grinch gonna, movie. Are they going to yeah. update it? For the Grinch movie, I or? haven't seen anything yet. Um, I think they're doing rehearsals this week, but I haven't seen anything for the new the the show they're doing this year or whatever. Um, I've heard rumors, but I don't know. To yeah. be honest, why is that so hot? What the Grinch? Who's? Why are who's? It's like a weird. What? I think who's are the cutest. Oh, you mean physically hot? Oh no, no, no. Like no. It's the weirdest thing. I was like. Man, didn't know that was a thing. So don't let Rich into Universal <laughs> for Grinch. That's my fetish. That's a, He's a like hoophile. As soon as you see it, that's my fetish. I'm a, like, I, you know what? Though? A hoophile. <laughs> I was wearing a Who Knows at Spooky Empire a couple years ago uh-huh. for a no. makeup demo we did. And this guy came up to me and was like, would you ever wear one of those for your boyfriend? And I was like, uh, Yeah, what? see, that's where, that's that's not. How dare you sir i like, was like very <laughs> hashtag who too immediately and huh. then yeah. i pulled a homer simpson and faded right into the bushes <laughs> <laughs> yeah i don't know i don't have the who thing I don't. no it's not like a th- it's just not it is like, cute it's like, but i wouldn't go with i'm not hot. like yeah yeah maybe hot's too much it's well, just maybe cute. not for you it's i don't know <laughs> you know you, don't you're you not have judging to, you don't have, yeah you don't have to you don't have to hide here 
You get, I'm not hiding. <laughs> believe me, I'm not hiding. I just, yeah. It's they're just they're like, yeah. cute. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, they're pretty cute. Uh, which it shouldn't be, because if you just look at the nose, it's like, ugh. Yeah. Ugh. But so, I don't know. Once it's on there, it's all painted and everything. Anyways, the point is, Grinch was is real cute, and yeah. you should go do it. Yeah. Yeah. And plus, I love Christmas. It's my favorite holiday. It used to be mm. Halloween, but now it's it's Christmas. So. Mine's my favorite is Christmas. It's as just well. great. Then I like. I'm already Halloween. watching Hallmark Channel movies. I'm like living it up. What's your least favorite holiday? Uh, I don't know. Mm. Definitely not St. Patrick's Day because that's my birthday. Mm. I don't know. I think Valentine's Day might be my least favorite holiday just because uh, I think yeah. it's corny. That's like a fake one. Yeah, it's I don't fake. like Thanksgiving. What the hell is wrong with you? I just don't like it. It's weird. It's in between the holidays I love. All the holidays like the, are fake. But it's no, like the but best I mean, food. no, you know what I mean. Like it's Valentine's the best food. Day is like, yeah, okay. <laughs> you can eat good food any day. Okay, yeah, you but don't need a reason that, you don't need, family <laughs> is... yeah, I can make a turkey. I can make. I can have Thanksgiving in like ten hours if okay. I wanted to. Well, you can also put an a hour pine tree up in your house whenever you want to, and you could go to neighbors' doors and say trick or treat. But there's one day yeah, you're supposed to but do that's it. Not, As a society, we've de- designated it this day, and I don't. Hey, I'm not bashing other people. I think you it. just bashed. I'm it. just saying that. No, I'm bashing <laughs> you it. But I don't a care. a Macy's Thanksgiving I, Day parade balloon. Apparently, Thanksgiving is her favorite. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, my family is very into like sharing meals together, and my okay. mom will like invite over all of our friends and uh-huh. our family, and it's just so I'm not like honestly, big into eating. Well, we're Italian, so any any chance to like get together and eat or food. talk with your hands. My dad says I've already been I'm, doing it. I'm trying to like keep I've, it to a minimum. I've over never, here. I've never liked Thanksgiving, and it, you know, my dad's always been like, "Well, yeah, that's because you're self-centered." No Ooh. surprise there. You don't like a day you're where you thankful. have to be thankful. <laughs> <laughs> like, which is like, uh, but it's like I don't know. I'm just, it's just a day where everyone's excited to eat. The colors are like brown. I don't know. I'm just not into it. <laughs> you don't have to. It's yeah, fine. Yeah, I'm not like okay. I don't hate it. But it's just, I think everybody, it's like, I, or every time, every year around Thanksgiving, it's like, okay, I'll tone it down a little bit, everyone. I think, actually. You I, can eat every day. Well, okay, but that's not the point of it. I know, that's not the point. I mean, everything, yeah. Don't. It doesn't have music. Don't There's no push music. Me There's to a the place decorations. Of the decorations are like not on par with other Cornucopia. big holidays, which is one of the worst Cinnamon decorations. <laughs> <laughs> I just, Caleb just sitting there as a little kid. Yeah, <laughs> brown, huh? Everyone's mm, eating more brown. Hmm. Buckle shoes. So does someone like, come and give me <laughs> gifts? Does someone come hats. in here and give me gifts? <laughs> Wait, all we're doing is eating. Christmas, you get to I eat mean, and get gifts, and it's, it's got the music anyways. and the decorations. It's got. Magic, it's got magic beings that come into your house. It's got all kinds of awesome stuff. But also Halloween's Thanksgiving is a little bit of a sham anyways, right? Because it's like, oh, the, the pilgrims and the Indians became friends. I, like, first of all, don't mislead me here. Okay. Yeah. We but have that's to, what all the holidays, all the holidays are rooted in, in stuff. It's all just. Slaughtering indigenous people. Yeah. I mean, I mean, Christmas, the actual date, though, is made. Uh, I mean, it was it it was a date that they were like, OK, let's do this to get these people to believe. In I think this. I like Christmas as so, a whole season, though, yeah. because I like the decor. Yeah, I like the songs. I like the Starbucks drinks. I like the Christmas episodes. Yeah, I like Christmas episodes. <laughs> I like Hallmark Channel movies because they are. I, first of all, I love Hallmark Channel movies all year round. You watch those movies and like an entire crew worked on that film. It is a full length movie. Yeah. And people worked on that. It's like a you know I like the old ones. They're like really bad now. They're, they're like pretty light. bad. They're like you worse. take that back. No, they are. Like you know what? compared to the ones they used to make, like I know. Arabian Nights. Well, I was looking like, into buying one. They used one. to make yeah. legit movies. I know. Well, they're still like legit. They're just kind they got, of they got a best boy grip. They're just they very, like, <laughs> notebook-like now. They're well, very, yeah, like, it's like not you even know what notebook. to expect. It's like, but sometimes you just want that. I yeah. don't need a curveball. I, I just want a straight pitch, and I want to know exactly what I'm getting. And with a Hallmark movie, I know what I'm getting. Yeah. It's like it's like two people will meet, and then there'll yep. be a conflict. The conflict is resolved. Cancer. Everybody's happy. Yeah. 
you know? No. No, oh, that's, that's the notebook. too heavy, man. Oh, that's the... Uh, that's it was Alzheimer's, I believe. Yeah. It wasn't That's cancer. the... Yeah, but then there's those other ones. Or maybe he had cancer. I don't know, but yeah. No, no it was just Hallmark. Alzheimer's. No, I thought, that, I thought he had cancer. They, no, she had Alzheimer's. Uh-huh. Yeah. I don't think the guy had cancer. No, did he, he didn't. I'm digging it. No, well, that guy he had made a heart it. problem. I don't remember. Something. Anyways. That guy made other movies with that girl having cancer. What? Yeah. Who? Yeah. He made a movie like like fault was a, that wasn't the fault, fault of our stars. stars or something. Yeah, that mm. guy makes those movies all the time. Oh, Same thing, oh, just that's the, different the author. disease. You're talking about the author. Yeah. Fault in Our Stars, different author. Yeah, but that was I a different see where thing. You're going the with. cancer thing was different. He did another movie that was similar. Huh. He's done a bunch of movies. It's uh, Nicholas Sparks. Sparks, yeah. yeah. yeah but that's the author. Of, yeah. Are you talking about the director or the no, author? No, the, the author. He's he, that he does. The, oh yes. He writes yes. those stories. He wrote those. Correct. Writes those. Yeah. Yes. All right. We're all back to yep. the same. So he did picture. the Fault in Our Stars. No, right? no, he no? didn't. That, that was, was different. Something guy. like that. I don't though. know a cancer one. He made the Channing Tatum movie. That was he, Zach Mike. Efron one. Magic yeah. Mike. Yeah. No. He made Magic. <laughs> this is like this is. This is bothering me. <laughs> Can you just fix that thing behind your head, please? The one with the the, the, the short midgets with hairy feet. They the have guy. A ring. So you're telling me the guy who made the notebook made Magic Mike? <laughs> no. I don't know the yeah. Channing. T- oh, I know what you're talking about, but I don't know the name of it. Yeah. Oh, I don't know it either. I don't know. But yeah, I, I, don't, I don't know. I like that recipe. I also, um, I, the, I'm not bothered by the commercials on the Hallmark Channel. They're benign. So I've I'm like, never. Just leave I've, it on. Okay, these are the Hallmark. Hallmark used to come out with their movies like annually. It was uh-huh. like a new Hallmark movie, and they used to come out on DVD. They used to have like a VOD release. They still do because I almost bought one that has Rob Lowe in it. Okay, but I didn't. I didn't because I was like. I don't need to buy any DVDs. It used to be kind of a bigger deal, though, and they didn't always used to be like that. It was kind of – it was a mixed bag. It was like, what's this movie going to be about? I don't know why I can't think of more of them than Arabian Nights. Lifetime there was like is also five of them, them that now. were awesome. Hey. Did they do the Odyssey? Am I tapping? No, the, the Batman thing's crooked. <laughs> this one floats, though. Like, I can't get it. It'll probably swing <laughs> back. It's weighted. It's weighted. Yo, but Lifetime's doing Christmas movies now, too, I've yeah. heard. I've got to check those out, because usually Lifetime is a little heavy for me. When it Hallmark comes to Christmas or... movies, I'm classic, more classic. Classic Die Hard. There's room Die for Hard's all sorts of movies. Movie. We, don't even, we don't even have enough time on this record right. to go into that. Yeah. Didn't Bruce Willis say it it's not, not? I don't care what he says. He's changed. <laughs> I think he got Christmas switched movie. out with someone else. No. He's, yeah, he pulled a, uh, he's a, he pulled a Paul McCartney. I used to think he was awesome. Now he's, he's a douche. A douche. Yeah. He pulled a Paul McCartney. Yeah. What died in a car wreck. Him. And swapped him out. And then out. they mm-hmm. swapped him out. There's a yeah. douche in place. <laughs> Douching it up. <laughs> making bad movies. Mainly because he said that Die Hard's not a Christmas movie. Oh, no. Is that what it was? I didn't even hear that he said that. It doesn't surprise me, though. Yeah. I think he said it during the roast of idiot. Bruce Willis. I think. I thought he, he said that. He's just, he's done movie interviews that I'm like, wow, this guy's a jerk. He is. A very attractive bald man. I don't think he would be if you talk to him. Score one for the bald guys, you know. Sure. Watch like Same his, with just the rock. look up like Bruce Willis jerk this is Heather's view, and you'll no, change your opinion. Why would I want to do that? He's a total dude. Bruce Willis, I already think Bruce enough Willis people are rotten, who. so I I don't need to add to the <laughs> huh. Bruce Willis is your who. Oh, I wouldn't go that far, Rich. You literally <laughs> said who's are hot. Use the word hot, which is just like. <laughs> she said very attractive. That's yeah. what I meant. In general, I mean, I'm not saying that I've got like a Bruce Which Willis Which Bruce thing. Willis, though? I like 80s and 90s Bruce Willis. He's awesome. He's the same person Attra- now. No, we are. Oh, man. So. The same Br- Bruce Willis. Come man. On. Okay. All right. I don't know. Sorry. 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 All right. Can we, talk about, can we talk about <laughs> politics or religion? Oh, Lord. Let's get away from Bruce Willis. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> yeah. There's two things we're not allowed to talk about. Three things. Bruce Willis. Uh, <laughs> Star Wars. Bruce Willis. And uh, Kevin Costner. All of these it's, things I'm not Kevin, highly we can talk about knowledgeable Kevin Costner about. So. All day. Well, if I said he was an overrated actor, you would just turn your mic off. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's easy. Yeah. Sorry. I, I'm just joking. I'm just pushing buttons. Oh, I don't care. Yeah. I, I'm like, I don't know anything about so, those three topics in general. So I just thought I'd sit here and Mr. Burns it. What's the... Uh, What's the weirdest thing that's ever happened to you as a makeup artist? Oh, I don't know. Uh, 
I really should have prepped for this. We didn't. We didn't. <laughs> I just, I just, made, up, I just made up that question. You know what was a really <laughs> weird experience was the first job I worked with you guys, which was that pool commercial. Oh, So I got yeah. there. Yep. I mean, there wasn't anything, like, funny that happened. It was just, like, so when we got there, it was, like, raining all day, and we had to do an outdoor yeah. pool shoot, and yeah. I'm doing makeup on – so I do makeup on everybody. Mm -hmm. Then they got to get in the pool. Yeah. And then they're having to get out of the pool, and back in the pool, I'm like, do I touch these people up, or what? they're getting right underwater again? Like, it yeah. was so weird for me. I felt like – I don't know. I felt, like, totally not equipped for that. And that was the weirdest? Oh, well, it was pretty weird for From me, a, too, because... From a... It gets weirder. Hang on. Yeah, because one of the guys was hitting on me the entire day. The guy with the tattoo, right? No, it was the old foreign guy. And he was, like, like getting... Aggressive. Aggressive about it, describing huh. what he... It was odd. It was not... It was not okay. I didn't. I was unaware of that. I didn't I know was either. I was I in the pool. I told you about it later. Later. Like, yeah. I didn't know about... If it was the day of, I would have said something. Yeah. I hate well, that. Well, you and stuff. I, you oh and God, I were in the pool so the entire odd. time. Yeah. 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 And remember, it rained the entire day. I feel like a makeup artist. Turn out? Good. They yeah? turned out yeah. good. It didn't look like it was raining yeah. much. <laughs> good. Yeah. It was, it yeah. was interesting. They but used them and we're super happy. Fab. I feel like with makeup artists, especially like, I don't know, it's something, it's also with photography. Like, it's a very, like, I don't want to say intimate, but it, it is a very close proximity craft well yeah you're close in you're their touching you're people up in their face, you're touching their face and i for feel makeup, like there has to be that level more so when you're when you're in that environment and i can like as a female i can only you imagine mean, what do you hey what do you mean that level of like professionalism it needs to so? go higher like yeah, you need to hold yeah. it higher yeah it needs to like you can't cross that line even the hint of it could go a blurred line yeah <laughs> like, i mean i feel like the worst things i deal with are like men on jobs that are either touching me and I'm like please stop touching me <sighs> or like just being inappropriate in general but I've never had anything like to, just I'm, made me as like soon as tired I tired just yeah. thinking about that <laughs> I know I mean I'm tired I'm the one that has to I know not the one it's like most people yeah at least half the people on the planet so um what was I saying I'm I know as soon as I leave here I'm going to be like oh shit how did I not tell them that ridiculous yeah. story but I know I'm on the spot, so I can't think of anything. No, so, that's you know, cool. But for the most part, every you know everything's been pretty straightforward. I mean, what's uh, what's like something that um, I don't know that like something that people don't really talk about with makeup. Like what's like a um, like I know I know the makeup industry is very competitive. I mean, mm -hmm. I've worked with a lot of makeup artists. They I I feel like makeup artists try to keep that like kind of a level of professionalism there i found that makeup artists don't talk about each other to other people but to each other they do but isn't that like all professions or eh, i don't know yeah, well, can be it's like a weird way like makeup artists i always feel like they're like oh i just don't want that to get back that that you knew that i said that but it's it's also like um i'd I, say photographers and Makeup artists, yeah. it's on the same level. Yeah. Well, we're artists, so we're like very yeah. sensitive about art. Well, and it's subjective. Yeah. So it makes it very easy. If I was like, listen, I don't like Heather's work, that could be valid. Right. It could just be me. I don't like your work. Right. Right. So that it's it it makes it makes for an environment of a lot of gossip, especially with it, with photographers. It's the same way. Would you ask her? Did you ask if her a if question? there was like a I don't know it, I I did start to ask a question, but then I lost it. Uh, I, it's not really a question, but like. I don't know. I feel like uh, it. Uh, the question was like, are, are there any secrets, like anything I don't know. Uh, well, something that that's people pretty... don't talk about? Like these, like, I don't know, with photography, like I was saying earlier, it's like pricing or clients that, uh, do you ever have a client? I don't know. Do you ever have, have a client that showed up with a lazy eye? No one talks about that. Yeah, no one talks about, No one talks about what to do when a guy shows up with a lazy eye. They don't. What do you do? Well, I mean, it depends. There's like it really depends. And like, there's some different things you can do. Well, something that this is like not a negative thing. This is kind of cool, but it's not when you're it working. It doesn't have to be negative. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> so, like, what, not necessarily if you're working as like a freelance artist, but if you're working on a production and, and you're working on the same uh, talent every single day, you get really close with the people you work on, mm -hmm. which is nice. And it's like a really unique uh, 
like bond or friendship or relationship that you have with that person because like you said it is like an intimate situation where yeah. you're touching their face they trust you because it's like you know look up what keep else your eyes I open do? like i'm getting right up underneath your eyelashes i'm looking up your nose yeah, yeah um but it's like a, a two-way street because then when they have to come back for a touch-up or removals and we have to like pat down their sweaty face or you know yeah I've gotten our talents sweat on my face before it's like flicked on me when i'm doing a removal or something which is so gross but then you're like well it's so and so so it makes it less gross because i know them and we're friends and whatever yeah it's still gross though but you know that's like a nice aspect of it where i, I like working on the same people consistently because then you do have a, a cool i'm sure it's the same thing if you take the you know photographs of the same client consistently sometimes sometimes with us it, it um it can get a little bit challenging because i i feel with photographers they um a lot of the creativity falls on them. Well, you're the photographer. You come up with it. So we're like the director. We're the, we're the photographer. We're the cinematographer. We're everything. Lighting. Everything rolled into one. With makeup, I think it's a little bit... You guys, maybe in the beginning, the pre-pro, pro, if you're in on the sculpting or design. I gotta stop design. you, though, because doing beauty makeup, if you're... Like, w when I come work for you guys, and yeah. somebody will be like, well, um, do whatever you want. It's like... Okay, well... I'm going full drag makeup. What do you want me to do? <laughs> you know, and a lot of people will be like, well, um, I don't know, just I, I want to look like myself. I've never met you before. So, yeah. like, you know, it, it can. it's the same thing where it's like we have to kind of um, guide people and hope that we are selecting the right path. Yeah. Because uh, even a, however long ago that was that we worked together and I put lashes on that lady and she was like, no, I don't like this at all. But I was like, I think you should wear lashes. I just imagine like there's like sayings in the makeup industry, like, you know, yeah, the bold like choice what? is the wrong choice. Like no, something like that. Like, is. no, but like, like, you know, there's just thing. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, like yeah. you don't want to stray away. Well, too, too like far truckers. from natural. Truckers have like codes that they. Yeah. I was listening to this report about truckers and this guy wrote a book because he's he was a trucker forever and he has a whole section where he describes like how they like what the names that they call motorcycle drivers like they just call them like fast uh something like organ donors like high speed organ donors pretty much like oh God, and then morbid. they like uh, yeah but that i mean that's you know and then they'll call like convertible something or and they have these different names almost like smokies they're the cops kind of thing but huh. like makeup artists you know the we kind of yeah. have in photography we kind of have those glances where we're like this is going to be this person but my point is, is when when clients that come in for us multiple times, it's a little bit of a challenge because we um, we had a client that we did an amazing job for the first year. This it, we did such an awesome job, but I feel like we set the bar really, really high. The next year, it was like, how do we top this? And then it's like, how do we top that? And you're constantly trying to yeah. one up, and it's almost like you need that fresh blood or ideas. With makeup, I I think also like if you know the client or the subject that you're putting makeup on. But then you also have an art team that's telling you what to apply. It eliminates that kind of stress of mm -hmm. like, well, I know you are uh, going to be, I don't know, Davy Jones. So I know yeah. that you need, and I have photos just to go off subtle, of. Just a subtle makeup, a <laughs> the subtle Davy thing. Jones. Davy Jones, even though there was no makeup. I can just imagine you, that. All you do is paint a bunch of squares on his face. I can just <laughs> I can Davy imagine Jones, that right? being the thing where I would be listening to somebody telling the idea for that version what we should do is we should make him have a squid beard and it moves around and does stuff i imagine me like yeah that'd be awesome but man you're like turning this into like a whole big thing <laughs> <laughs> you just described like 40 million dollars like I, I just imagine like listen we just Wait, want him green Disney was he's like, a green pirate great yeah, I'm just saying like that would that yeah, that'd probably be my experience Jerry with Bruckheimer. It. Yeah, <laughs> as gets like whatever he wants. Yeah, I'm just saying. Obviously, that's what they wanted, but just me. Yeah, I could see it being like a different budget and somebody being like, "We could do this," and I'd be like, "Yeah, that'd be amazing." Yeah, it would be a spectacle yeah. project. Wow, why don't we? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, maybe we next see, we'll I, just I, hire Johnny Depp. I thought you said since we just have unlimited money. Yeah, I thought you were yeah. going to keep this simple, Caleb. Well, I yeah. was. That's why the tentacles only moved to the left. Yeah. I was going to, you know, I didn't. Yeah. I didn't have he only has 100, not 200. Yeah, dude. Yeah. Duh. Yeah. That's what it would be like. I love those but. movies. 
So what's what's like? Uh, yeah, those movies are amazing. Yeah. I like one, two, and four. Mm. I could watch them three all. and I'd five. Watch them all. Or all. I, I think just... one is excellent. Mm-hmm. I love Great. that movie. Yeah. Yeah. Three times movie. in the theater. Uh, I could just watch the old, them all. one of the only movies you, I've seen multiple times. Want to hear theater. something that I don't know what about it, but I've, I saw it like ten times in theaters. Okay. Why? I don't know. I just loved it. I mean, it was like one of the first movies that I saw that I was oh, like, "Oh, Pirates!" Yeah, I thought you were gonna say another movie. Oh, I was like, I was no, like no, what? "Are you gonna tell us?" Yeah, I was I don't like, know. "What did I say?" I don't know. No, I saw it ten, like ten times in theaters because I kept going to you see really it with people. It. They were like, "I haven't seen it. Do you want to go see it?" And I'm like, "That's why okay. I went." I kept being like, "You gotta but see I liked it." it. And I'm like, so oh, I haven't like, seen it. Well, let's go. I ended up going two more. I didn't go up. I didn't go nine more. I just. I was like one of the first <laughs> movies that I saw that I like saw all of it. Like all mm-hmm. of the production of it, I yeah. was like, "Holy shit!" Yeah. The costumes, the scenic, the makeup, that Had acting, a cool story. the story—it was like everything. And yeah. growing up with Disney here and mm-hmm. going on Pirates of the Caribbean: The Ride, the a acting zillion was on times. Point. Yeah, I was just—I loved Food so much about that turns movie. Turns to ash in our mouths. It's it oh, so Jeffrey good. Jeffrey Rush, so it good. So good. One of the maintenance guys at our school looks kind of like that Jeffrey quote wrong. Rush. Just throwing that out there. <laughs> Leave a comment below. Just tell him how, how much he sucks at movie yeah. quotes. It's, it's cool. It's probably Just a word or two Just steamroll off. the part where my maintenance guy looks like Jeffrey Rush. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Our, our <laughs> teachers, every time he comes in the building, is like, Jeffrey Rush is here. They want to do a Barbosa makeup on him so bad. Has he ever done it? No. He's like the handyman. He's like a... So? We should ask him. He's you really nice. You him. haven't asked him? I thought no. he was going to be like, no. I'll do the I photos. I thought people had asked him hey, all the time. Hey, we'll do, do the do photos. <laughs> we'll do the photos. I bet he'd do if it. You yeah. get, if you get him dressed up, get the costume, Yeah, we'll show up and do Powder the Powder his face all up. The, all of the, <laughs> the maintenance men at my building are Wait, not the A+. powdery one. Not powdery Barbosa? No, that was powdery funny, Barbosa. but. Yeah, and the one movie where he's like has like the powder on his face. Like the oh, is that in the end of the? the no, it was in. The, no, in this it's not in the first or second. No, not first or second. It's in yeah, it's like the, the trail fourth tail end. one. It was. I thought it was fourth the last fifth. one. Maybe the last one. I don't yeah. think I saw the last one. So bad. Totally like, honest. Only one. But well, Jeffrey Rush as as like an old proper, yeah. You know he's got a powdered face and a wig. Mm-hmm. Oh, I don't know it about awesome. that. Yeah. It was. It was funny. That was one I of the like only good piece. parts of the movie. I'm gonna be honest with you. I love a period piece. Yeah. Yeah. Do you like? Uh, Do you ever see Peaky Blinders? I haven't watched it, but I've heard it's excellent. It's yeah. amazing. Is What's... Steve Buscemi in that? No, that's, no. that's Boardwalk, Boardwalk Empire. Empire. Yeah. Gotcha. Never there, I don't know why I brought that up. There's not much makeup, but it's a period, period piece. Thing. But like, no, yeah. I really have been enjoying the show Outlander, but I read those books. I so. I started the first episode and just I don't have cable, and so I'm and like, mm, I don't know where it's to on stream stars. it. I don't have stars. Well, I pay for it because Stars has. First of all, Stars has excellent programming right now. All their movies are really, really good. And I also uh, signed up for Shudder. Do you know what this is? No. It's like with a, a t- horror with T's with or D's. D's. Okay. Shudder. Uh, it is streaming horror movies. Okay. And then they just um, started doing it. Do you know who Joe Bob Briggs is? Just no. never mind everything. Joe so, Bob Riggs is an excellent horror host, and he used to host a show called Monster Vision. Oh. Um, so now he's doing a show called Last Drive In with Joe Bob Riggs. Yeah. And I know Monster Vision. Yeah. So that he Shutter brought him back. Hmm. So it's been awesome. He's so funny. So do you watch that after Hallmark? <laughs> or. You know. Um, does, do you go from Hallmark? To shudder to no i feel like it's like showtime. i gotta separate it by the days and honestly hallmark just you know cropped up with the christmas yeah. movies and after halloween Horror nights it's like i need to go on full christmas yeah that's cool to wash out my wash mouth. out all the night <laughs> have you have you caught any of the uh that eli roth show that the that new show that he came uh, out wait, with on amc it? no looks pretty good what? what's it called I have no idea. How have I not heard of it? Great. That? It's a new Eli Roth like TV show where he interviews like the classic. Like he's got Robert England on there. He's got Greg Nicotero. Oh, mm. really? Yeah, yeah. Doug Bradley, I think, was on there. No, I haven't. Uh, seen Rob Zombie's on it. Like he brings him in and he talks about classic horror movies and. Cool. Yeah, it it's all, just like it, a talk show. Yeah, yeah. Okay. It's like an interview, just back and forth. He just, you know, Eli Roth is kind of like. I don't know what to think about that. Yeah, guy. I don't know. I don't first a decade, off, and I still don't know what to think about him. Yeah, <laughs> I don't even know, know where where the hell did he come from. 
I don't he even know who he is. I've just Hostel. been going, oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Who is He's he? got a great name, Eli Roth. It sounds familiar. He did Hostel. And oh. he did The Green Inferno. No, he no, no. He did, uh, he did, um, he was in Death Proof. I see. I've never he was seen in Hostel, and Bastards. I have no desire. Inglorious Bastards. Oh, he, he was? was? the dude with the bat. The oh, bear yeah, Jew. yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. He's. I know he likes gore. Yeah. <laughs> the problem is, is that he seems like a big douche. Oh but no, he does. But then he also. But then I'm conflicted because he hates seems Bruce Willis. Because he seems hates to have, Eli Roth. Oh, he he doesn't no, hate Bruce I don't, Willis. No, he hates modern Bruce modern Willis. Modern Bruce Willis. Yes. Okay. I think most people who work with him do look up Kevin Smith and see what he has to say about him. It's crazy. It's like, so you whoa. like Kevin Smith? Uh, uh well, I like. Hang on, I like him in a moderate. <laughs> I I like the first Clerks. Mallrats. I liked it. Excellent. Okay, yeah. Uh, I love I don't Mallrats. know if it's excellent, but you know. okay. Well, well, I'm not like it's a, at least a three star. Here's She's the gonna thing. flip the table. Here's the and get thing: out of if here. somebody <laughs> says, if somebody's like, oh, like, somebody's like, oh, so you like Kevin Smith? It's there's two ways to go. Either you're going to be like, what? You don't think he's the best? Or it's like, oh, you're one of the, those people who likes I him. I feel neither way. So make a well, third that's category. that's nice. That's very like. No, I, I'm. So what ruined Kevin Smith for me was film school. Oh, yeah. It wasn't Kevin Smith. Yep. Yeah. It was the, the pedestal that these film students put him on. Yeah. Which is crazy because Kevin Smith doesn't like film school. Still. What ruined Kevin Smith yeah. for me was his giant, weird jean shorts that he would wear in public. Have you ever seen those pictures You live of in him? Florida, though. Does he live in Florida? <laughs> no, but no, that's from a New thing Jersey. here. Jean shorts? Jean shorts is not a thing anywhere. Oh, I always Florida. liked Kevin Smith. They're too Smith. thick to Florida. be short. I've always liked Kevin Smith. I liked his movies. I thought they were great, but I didn't think they were like... I mean, these guys, so they're not biblical. Well, and, and we'd have like we in directing class every morning when you said like when they did attendance, you'd have to say a quote from a movie. And 90 percent of it was like Jay and Silent Bob shit. Yeah. Like it was like, Kevin oh, Smith. God, Hi, you're ruining yeah. you're ruining this snoochy boochy. Oh, God. Oh, <laughs> like it was man. horrible. It was horrible. And then I went back to full sale and I got my master's in business mm -hmm. but the first class that you take there you're in with master's students that are in different programs and the film ones still are like I'm doing my my thesis paper on Kevin Smith and why he's the greatest director it's creepy and weird and I it same exact what thing. That's why on? when you're like, so do you like Kevin Smith? It's like, whoa. <laughs> even though, even though I do, it's just this his fans. I did mine. But I did my main paper mm -hmm. on uh, actors making the transition from radio to film. Who did that? All of them. Like, no, I mean like, like so. There would be radio personalities uh -huh. like like uh, Jack Benny, Bob Hope, oh, okay. and they're radio superstars. But then movies and they started getting bigger well, and bigger. Well, that makes sense, right? It's like because everybody had a radio and they all loved them. And mm -hmm. then that was an easy yep. marketing transition. Yeah. Cool. Well, not easy, though. A lot of it was like, oh, they suck at acting. And I don't like mean easy like that. I mean like uh, a logical yeah, yeah. transition. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm, uh, I have uh, a massive like old radio show collection. I think I have like. Three, it's impressive. 3,000 hours now, something like that. I don't know how you find time to do all the things you do because <laughs> I feel like I don't have time to do anything. And it's too much Hallmark. I just put it on in the background. It's not like I'm glued to the TV. I'll leave it on for the cat. Listen, you well, bastard. It, see, but, but see, the things where I talk about it now in this setting where it's like people are like, wow, you know, you're really knowledgeable about Sorry. about Netflix shows, old radio shows. Yeah. Oh, man. Like, but like little do you know, my wife, he, he it's was... all just me sitting on the couch. Like, <laughs> hey, hey, I'm doing like, research. Yeah, I'm, I'm painting Warhammer. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. 
Oh, you're painting again? Let me guess. You're painting. Like <laughs> trolls. Like yeah. Trolls. Yeah. So radio shows is one of the things that I listen to while I'm doing other things. Okay, that makes sense. That with podcasts because you you don't have to look at it. And so yeah, I'll um, yeah, paint more hammer while I'm listening to old radio shows. <laughs> that sounds shows. delightful. I wish I had some fucking time to paint Warhammer and watch some TV, watch Shutter, and just yeah. kick back. I guess you so make the time. What what would be? I was uh, gonna do it tonight. It just has to be life. Until yeah. I got a reminder email. <laughs> yeah, just yeah. I was I was on my way to do that, and then I had to drive fifty minutes. Yeah, I was like great, a night off. Can't wait. <laughs> because Billy and I are going to IAPA tomorrow. IAPA. Yeah. That? The uh, what is it stand for? International Amusement Park. Yeah. Ba ba ba. Hmm. It's is like it? it's like an it's like an amusement park convention. Yeah. Trade show. Oh, okay. And. It's like uh, the world's largest. They show they demo like VR, um, different video different games, different roller coasters, foods different that carts. you might want to sell at your theme park. Yeah, uh, all anything sorts of theme things. park related. Attractions is mm-hmm. that what it is? International it's attractions, yeah. Amuse- attractions and amusement park. Something I don't. Like I don't that, know. Yeah, mm-hmm. I'm getting it wrong. That's yeah. cool. But yeah, so we're going to that tomorrow after work for a couple hours. Yeah. Although I'm like a nerd, so I'm like, oh man, we only get to go for two hours. That's not enough time. I can't even Why? try all the fennel. Why yeah. can't you go? <laughs> Wait, so the fen- fennel. Fennel, like that's what they use for. Fennel, that's like a root vegetable, isn't it? They use it for uh, cotton candy. Is it? Wait, is fennel a root vegetable? <laughs> Do they use it? I'm for googling cotton it candy? now. I have no idea. Yeah, it's. Fe- I thought it was like. I fennel thought you were trying sugar. to say funnel cake. I'm like this idiot. Fennel. No, um, I was trying to make you sound like cake. a like a cotton candy. Yeah, I like, don't really like cotton candy, so but I've either. heard there's some sort of a dip and dot situation going on at this thing, so I'm mm. pretty excited about that. I don't know. I have um, I like to get into things until I know the most I can about it. No, it's called floss. Oh, uh, yeah. What's fennel? Fennel's a vegetable. Is that a I drug? think it's a vegetable. No, that's like, fentanyl. Fentanyl. <laughs> I know. He said they make cotton candy out of fennel. I'm going. They make that shit out yeah. of a vegetable. Yeah. <laughs> fennel looks like a uh, a uh, green onion. Mm. Uh, hmm. A root vegetable. It is a root vegetable. Score. Yeah. Score for. Oh, I gotta go one. get the fennel. Yeah. That's but, right next to the turkey legs. Yeah, the fennel cotton candy. It's right over there. <laughs> Yeah. Floss. I knew it started with an F. They actually wind the cotton candy on a piece of fennel, and then you eat it at the end. It's like sweet and salty. You just figured out how to ruin cotton candy. <laughs> um, Congrats. I like to like take subjects and learn all I can about them mm-hmm. before in a non creepy way. I, no, well, no, in you an obsessive way. Uh, I mean, sometimes it can take years to learn the stuff so and when it, so when i was a kid you're already researching iapa 2020 eh, no it has to interest me as far as like being something that i could get into so my dad went to costco when i was a kid and he got a for some reason they were selling a box set of old radio shows mm-hmm. and it was you know it was like a collection it had like charlie mccarthy uh um, like Amos and Andy and all these old radio shows. And he brought it home and was like, here, I got this. You know, you can listen to them. They're, they're, you know, they're cool. They're old radio shows. And I remember looking at it thinking like, why would I listen to this? I don't want to listen to this. This is stupid. And so I put it on the shelf. And then one day I was drawing in my room and I'd, I had to listen to all my CDs a thousand times on my little boom box thing. And I was like, oh, well, I've got this. Well, I'll just put this in. And I was listening to them, and they're complete. You know, radio shows are still complete His cuts Backstreet with Boys ads. CD was like. Yeah. <laughs> couldn't <laughs> done with the Backstreet Couldn't hit Boys repeat CD. anymore. <laughs> couldn't bring myself. I was um, thinking like Nirvana. Yeah. Yeah. I had that. Uh, uh, and I was listening to it, and radio shows are complete with – you know, the half hour or the, most of them are half an hour with like ads and movie pitches. Mm. And it was this super strange. Don't forget to try Alka-Salsa. Exactly. <laughs> like Lucky Strike. Yeah, like, yeah. Uh, theirs was, um, 
like LSMFT Lucky Strike makes fine tobacco. Like these Ooh. old ads. And then it was people like Humphrey Bogart on a comedy show. And then he'd be like, you know, don't forget to check out my new movie, The Big Sleep. Be sure to drink your oval tea. Yeah, yeah. A crummy commercial. Yeah, <laughs> but and then in that box set, there was a uh, Richard Widmark. He was in a movie called um, <sighs> It's Not Touch of Evil, Kiss of Death. He was in a movie called Kiss of Death, which the is. The sequel is Touch of Evil. No, that's totally different. <laughs> uh, that's the prequel. Yeah. No. The Kiss of, of Death evil. comes after. Kiss of Death. Yeah. Don't listen yeah. to anything these people are saying. So none of it's true. So where he played, so Richard, they're Rich, just idiots. Rich, yeah, they're they, just stop. They haven't even stop. To an that hour wasn't true. Of that wasn't true. <laughs> they don't even know what it is. Um, Once Caleb starts rocking more, yeah, like, yeah. <laughs> oh, this is where he calls me autistic. Great. <laughs> Thanks a lot. Yeah, yeah. Um, that's not a real thing. <laughs> now I have to explain myself. So. In this box set, Richard Widmark makes an appearance in one of the in one of the radio shows. Uh-huh. And in real life, he had made a movie called Kiss of Death, where he played this character called Tommy Udo. And in this radio show, he played Tommy Udo in these different scenes. It's like a fan fiction? Yeah. Okay. Exactly. And I was like, this is awesome. This is crazy. Because that movie was one of my favorite like film noir type movies. That's pretty neat. And I was like, this is like a whole hour of like extra content from the 30s. Like oh, it's you know super what? This is odd. Sort it's of like related, the hidden but... features on a DVD. Yeah. Like yeah. The, you're, the... I was talking to, actually I was talking to Nick Wolf. This was mm-hmm. like a couple years ago. And he was talking about um, Star Wars. Because he's a huge Star Wars fan. Mm-hmm. And he was like... It's all we had. He's like, yeah. we didn't. He's like, in the seventies, there was not a ton of nerd culture. Mm-hmm. He's like, that was what we had. He's like, we had Lord of the Rings, which was not a movie, just books, just yeah. the books, <laughs> and we had Star Wars. And it's like how he was like talking just about how exciting it was yeah. when that was all going. You know, when everything was getting released back. Yeah, then. but yeah, but and then so I listened to all those and I was like. Well, so are there more of these? Can you buy more? And then my dad started buying them for me. And then he got to the point where it was like, dude, you got to like buy these on your own. I mean, I can't, these are, they're not cheap. And you're listening to like entire collections in two days. I mean, it could be worse, dad. I mean, it's either this or drugs. Yeah. 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 What do you want me to he do? He was already buying, buying them on that level so of like, how did you... yeah, I get it. I get it. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <You're>... <laughs> How did but you like, afford to buy all your old radio shows? Um, you well, that was like, yeah, exactly. <laughs> if only. Well, I don't like to talk hours. about it. I'd have yeah. 60 hours. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, well, I didn't like, I did kind of at first, I, you know, I'd buy some kits with like my, you know, allowance and stuff. Like I was, you know, a kid when I started doing it. And then, uh, you know, cause that's what all, that's what all 12 year olds do. the gateway. Do. It's the gateway. So all 12 year olds do. They're looking into the golden age of radio. Yeah. (laughs) But I mean, but I was also, I bought books on it. My dad bought me this encyclopedia. It's like, it's like 2000 pages. And I read the whole thing. Like it's a history of every radio show, like pre, uh, I don't really know how they picked it, but it's got everything in it. Man, and it has like a history of it all. I don't all. know if I've ever been that dedicated to learning about something. I was just obsessed with it. I yeah, still am. I makeup. still listen. No, 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 no. Like I don't know. That's like a. But I don't know if there's any hobby thing that I've ever like been that dedicated. To, makeup like, wasn't a hobby. I don't. I don't know. That's different. Yeah, that's, was, no, because it's that's not. not his career. Is what I'm getting at. So like, but it not, could. It could have been. Well, it's not his career because audio sucks. Yeah, that's, no, I'm just kidding. Well, there's not as much of a right market. Now. I mean, but I get what you're saying. Like he's, you know he's what like, I'm saying? It's yeah. not related to your career. It's not yeah. related to school. But it is. It's but just it like is. an extracurricular thing for like a passion thing. Well, I, I think yeah. it is related. I think it's related in the fact that it's it's a form of storytelling. And if anything, it's a form of storytelling where you have to over explain. It's I like a not, level. Not that it's not related. I'm just you know, it's not a direct. Yeah. He doesn't. No, I get what you're saying. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But I mean, makeup is like, 
I mean, it's the same thing with me. Like, I love makeup. I love the history of makeup. Yeah. I love mm-hmm. horror movies. I love that gore stuff. But my thing is photography. I yeah. mean, honestly, you know, I do. A, I do a lot less makeup now that I'm operate yep, the school teaching though. it yeah i'm not even teaching i'm like yeah. doing most of admin. the admin work yeah. yeah so i mean and that's so if you could if you could like what's your uh what would be your dream project like what's your dream project to produce as a makeup artist oh i don't know no no i don't like this <laughs> you know uh something i've learned so some questions you could have fucking asked me before yeah right way to go on that <laughs> So when I opened the school, I was like, man, I can't wait to be in charge. And now that I'm in charge, I'm like, man, I hate being in charge. Because yeah. it's just sometimes easier to take direction. You know, it's like you don't have to think about it. You clock in. Yeah, but what happens when you want to go home? What do you mean? They never go home when you own the school, own the nah. business. It's like constant around the clock. You're thinking about it no matter what. Yeah. At a job that you just punch in, do your job, and then when you clock out, you're like, See ya. You'd be See miserable. ya on Monday. I know You'd I'd be, be miserable. miserable. But when you when you say it what's your dream, nice. right now I'm like, I would love to work under as part of a team. Yeah. Uh on something really cool. That would be yeah. that is that's like the so dream. So your dream is to be an employee. <laughs> 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 No, yeah, like, that's what she just described. Yeah. My dream no, would, would to be to not work. in charge and to Someone punch to a clock. Someone to tell me no. where to go. No. Tell me what to I do. I should have been more clear. Uh, I mean, like, as part of a uh, team of makeup artists working on, like, a film or a production of some sort, like, I wouldn't want to be the department head and, or, like, the key artist. Like, but, give me a call list. What's the project that you would want your to work on as an employee? Buffy the Vampire Slayer, the remake. Huh. I love Buffy. I know, I do too. Yeah. I wish I could zoom in on Caleb's face. There's some. There's well, so I many can't thoughts. very well go back in time, Caleb. You don't know how that's going to turn as out. As, yeah. As soon as she said that, I, I cut well, to you. Well, are they definitely doing it? I don't know. Because when I had heard about that, they're putting out all these rumors. I think to see how much they can infuriate people. Well, and I, then they're going to. Aren't say, they going to do just an extension of the canon? They're not going to remake it. They've changed their minds. Uh. Yes. Which I'm okay with that if they've got like a new Slayer. Yeah, I don't Let's think they the should. Let's forget the comics I'm and fine go forward with, yeah, I, with the show. Oh God, Rich, come on. Let's talk about who's again. We'll bring them back. Yeah, in. Let's talk so, about. No, but you like, had your turn. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, yeah, I would love to work. Hashtag on, who too? Okay, I guess I shouldn't just say Buffy. I would love to work on a great teenage supernatural either Sabrina? a movie or television series. Something okay. like Vampire Diaries mm-hmm. or Riverdale mm-hmm. or, you know, something in the CW sphere. Yeah. Whew, that sounds like perfect. A soap. A supernatural a teen soap, soap. A supernatural teen soap. <laughs> that is where it's at. Yep. I I mean I, I cool. liked I liked uh I haven't I haven't watched Riverdale yet, but I watched Sabrina. I thought I it was good. I thought it was dark. I kind of crapped out on Riverdale. I, I, didn't, I finished the first season, and I was like, I need more meat in the show. The second season was worse. Well, then I'm definitely not going to watch it. But I hope, I, they, I hope they switch it up. I loved Vampire Diaries. I really liked iZombie. It got a little off the rails for me to, lately, yeah. so I haven't watched the most I don't know, season. though. I mean, I like Vampire Diaries, but Riverdale's like a better show. I grew up with um, Candace Ackla. She oh. plays Caroline. Mm-hmm. She is one of the nicest people hmm. I've ever known in my life. Hmm. Like, since we were kids, she was just, like, so pure and nice. Hmm. And it's so cool when you see somebody that has always just been the sweetest person yeah. get to be on your favorite television show. Yeah. <laughs> I love what's her. Your, what's your favorite horror movie? My favorite horror movie? Okay, let me tell you first the, the movie that I am most afraid of is Silence of the Lambs. Okay. That movie scared me more than any movie. Is I've that a horror watched. movie? It's a thriller yeah. for sure. It's a thriller. What do you mean by horror? I don't I I, I kind of look at Silence of the Lambs as like a yeah. like a mystery drama. Yeah. Okay. Do you get what I'm saying? Like to me, it's like, on the edge. He does wear someone's on the face. Edge. It is on the edge. He, yeah. <laughs> he is on. wearing faces. No, yeah, no, she's not. in the night vision goggles, yeah. and it's like, that or was he's freaky. in the night vision goggles, and then she's in the house, and she's like, ah. I just don't. I, to me, horror movies are like, like Saw is a horror movie. Oh, I well, can't watch those that. Those like slashers. 
Yeah, that's a slasher. Yeah. Which then I would have I'm to not go. Saying it's, I'm not saying Silence of the Lambs I love isn't Friday the 13th. If you really want to pin me down here, I really like Friday the 13th. That's a sl- yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, it's a horror movie. Yeah. Hmm. I like. My, uh, I, go ahead. I'm still talking. Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> no, keep going. I love Halloween. Uh, the first one I think is awesome. I haven't seen the new one, and so I so really you like the big it. guys walking slow, always catching up. And I loved the new it. I freaking loved I did the too. new it movie. I loved it. Movie Don't you sucked. dare! I right loved now. it. It sucked. sucked. I no, I thought it was so not. good. It was so, so good. dumb. We'll just talk now. I thought it was yeah. good. Nope, it was amazing. I did. Bill I Skarsgård. I was pleasantly it. surprised. Yeah. I was like, "This is creepy." I creepy. love the movie Jaws. Here's what I didn't like yeah, about it. Here's what I didn't like about it. What I didn't like about the new it is I felt like it tried to be too much like Stranger Things. No way. Yeah, yeah. the ki- the kids. Yep. They were they even the one guy is from Stranger Things. He was very like I felt like they just tried to capitalize on that a little too well, much. Well, then you could say Stranger Things tried to be like Goonies. I mean, I don't, I don't know. It's just, well, but they, they did, did, and they said they did. <laughs> but it, <laughs> like, I, the, like, well, here's but the thing. But it's all a genre. It's like, that's... Do you know no, what? I get yeah. I get the necessity of, of that area, like having to do it of that area. It just Listen, felt Rich, a little too much. You know this probably very well. People say they want new stuff, but really they just want the same stuff repackaged in a new thing and that's just true across the board yeah. so the reason we like stranger things and goonies and, and yeah it's the same little formula it's like well yeah because i already liked it the, in the first place so just do that more yes. yeah but that you bothered know? but with it it bothered me because i felt like they didn't have to do it yeah i felt like they i, I don't know and that's I the like only that it's scenario. the only thing that i it's the only thing that i was like Meh. i like it too but it felt a little unnatural like it wasn't like it an felt honest forced, take. Yeah, they need to be riding their bikes down the street. Like it, just you just thought of it. It was more like that's what people like. They like bands of kids. So we have riding to throw around it on in. their well, bikes. Wait, it felt kind of forced. Were they, when were they filming, and when did Stranger Things come out? Come on. After. But how long ago? Like how long? There was enough. Listen. There was enough. Just <laughs> let it go. A good year. Hey, you don't have to defend it. I, I mean, they're like. Yeah. I. He yeah. liked it. There God. was other. There was things. Best movie ever. No, there was things that. I mean, I was like, "What?" It's been. It's been like a year since I watched it. But at the time, I was like, I had a bunch of things. I had a laundry list of things that I didn't like about it. And one of the things, I really did not like, and I it kind of bugs me about Stranger Things too, especially the second season. I don't like how much they write in how much the kids swear. Mm. It's adults talking to me. Adults wrote it. I've never heard kids. It's very, you can tell it's unnatural when they do it, when they swear, because they don't swear like that in real life. I don't know. I remember little kids swearing when I was a little kid. Yeah, but it's different here. Clearly like, you didn't gr- grow up in New Jersey. <laughs> <laughs> like, I'm just, no, It. I'm telling you, the way that they do it. Yeah. The kids might swear, but not the way that they are in these movies it's it's too they write it too naturally into the dialogue for Mm -hmm. these kids it's not like when kids swore at least where i was from when kids swore it was like to make a point it was to uh i don't know it was kind of a and i'm not talking like teen like you know 16 17 like older i'm talking like you know how old are they in that 11 12 i don't know yeah 11 or 12 it's more like gauge of child age yeah but they write it in like it's a natural part of the conversation and it's out of place. It feels weird to well, me. Well, I don't know. I'm so not against swearing at all. It's not like I didn't like the swearing. It's not <laughs> that. It, it it makes the writing, since it's for children, you can tell that an adult wrote their dialogue. I don't it know. It brings me I out mean, of it a little I don't, bit. Yeah, that's fair. I know, well, and another remake I'm very excited about is Suspiria. Because mm-hmm. I love Suspiria. I thought that movie was fucking radical yeah. i just saw it for the first time like last year mm-hmm. and then i found out they were doing a remake of it which by the way they did that whole thing on film the new one that's coming out mm. they filmed like on physical film mm. which i think it's gonna look really neat i'm excited about it I it'll think probably look the same look the exact same <laughs> as what as digital what do you mean as digital? it's gonna look the same it's no just, it's yeah, probably well. just gonna be grainier they're just probably just going oh yeah. we're retro i like that yeah, that's fine. It's gotten to the point. So now. your uh, favorite horror movie is Halloween. 
No, Friday the 13th. Friday the 13th. I, I don't Okay, here's the thing. Everything I'm thinking of in my head is really a thriller. Those I guess thrills. you're not. Those are horror. I know, but even those aren't like necessarily any of my favorite movies. Like okay. I loved Alien, obviously. Yeah. Fucking awesome movie. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. I don't know if I have like a favorite horror movie because horror isn't my favorite genre. Okay. Yeah. What's your favorite genre? Uh, I don't know. Teen soap. Rom coms. <laughs> like, yeah. She's yeah. into the rom coms. Yeah. I don't know. I like a lot of different kinds of movies. I do not care so much for action movies. I get ironically bored. Yeah. And um, yeah. It, Why is that anything? Ironic? Because they're action. And it's oh, like boring. yeah. Yeah. Maybe that's like the stereotype. We just assume that you liked horror movies because you're in this industry. Right. No. Yeah. And I do. I do. I love like anything vampire. I, I fucking love yeah. vampire movies. Um, but so I like, really liked the Fright Night remake, which I don't know if oh, that's yeah. a controversial take. No. I loved that. I thought no, it was fucking was good. awesome. I thought Karen, Carol, bleh, Colin Farrell. Mm, Colin Farrell, yeah. Karen, Karen Farrell. <laughs> I thought um, that was good. Yeah. I, I mean, I, I also, I don't know. I'm a very, I like Wes Craven. I like. Mm-hmm. Oh, I love you know, Scream. Maybe Scream's Scream my favorite Scream is a great movie. movie. I fucking uh, love Scream. I thought Scream Four was fucking awesome too. I think, I think for me, Nightmare on Elm Street. I also really like um, Dracula 2000. There's something to be know. said too for like 80s Dracula movies in 2000. general. Well, hear me out. Hear me out. Hold on. Hold on. Oh, hold on. Hold God. on. I knew as soon as I said that. <laughs> Listen, I like, he's like, uh, oh, you see that cut and you see this and then they. That's, that's not true. They delivered this it does line. Kind of sound like they delivered true. this line weird and uh, it needs the to have teeth, bigger problems than that. The teeth. Anyway. I got the Stranger Things poster. Just because I don't like something about, oh, about something doesn't mean I write the whole movie. So off. hold on, hold on. I, this is the reason. There's a bug here. Get it out of here. We're having a problem here. (laughs) Throw it over to you. I here's why I like Dracula 2000. From a story standpoint, it was an (laughs) awesome take on. Is the bug on me? No, I'm just (laughs) laughing that you feel like you have to explain yourself. Well, because well, he kind of does. uh, Because Buffy over here, Buffy the Vampire Slayer over here is, uh, you know, so here that. That was it was an awesome take on on Dracula as a story. Here's my hmm. thing about Dracula. Have you ever seen Dracula? If, and that is true. That's true, but I that have. doesn't make it a but yeah. Who's in it? Uh, uh, Gerard Butler. Gerard Butler. It's a hor- it's a horrible like no. and like ludicrous or somebody what? outcast. There's some rapper in that no. movie, isn't there? No. Uh, I'm pretty sure. No. Uh, it's the guy from House is in it. Oh yeah. Yeah, you're just you know. No, no, no. <laughs> it's not true. Hold on. Do you guys consider like haunted house movies horror movies? Haunted house. Oh, like yeah. paranormal activity. No, or... like Conjuring. Yes. Yeah, kind of absolutely. I loved, I loved Conjuring. And yeah. Conjuring Two scared the Conjuring, me so bad I, think... I couldn't even go get ice cream out of the refrigerator or out of the freezer after I watched it. I... Billy was like, "You're 30 years old." I think the yeah. Conjuring. Turn the light You're on. You're a grown ass woman. Yeah. yeah. I, think, I think the Conjuring is the scariest movie of all time. Really? I think it's the best horror movie of all time. Yeah, That's what it was I mean. good. That was real good. I, there's nothing happens in 45 minutes, and I was terrified the whole time. Yeah. There is no monster, and you're just, like, sweating. Yeah. I mean, it's good. <laughs> so the, the I haven't seen The Nun. I'd like to see that. Yeah. Anything that's new, I haven't seen. Dracula 2000. <laughs> We're going to go back oh to this? It, my only opinion on Dracula is that Van Helsing is a massive buzzkill and he needs to mind his own fucking so business. So that's what this movie's about. What, him minding his business? It's about, so it's, it. here's the thing. It's a it's a cheesy time. Like, they, they tried to make it too much like are 2000. There, are there bad wigs? What do you mean? Do they wear horrible time period no, appropriate no, 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 wigs? No. no. So here's what happens. In this movie, spoiler alert, Van Helsing s- steals Dracula. He traps Dracula. What year is it? 2000. I'm That's out. why it's. I'm out. Listen. I'm out. Okay. Hear whatever. me out. It's a cool storyline. I like line. a time period piece. I like silly it is. wings. It's a mix. I it's like a mix. recreation. Hold on. Okay, it's go a ahead. mix. So Van Helsing takes, he captures Dracula back in the day. Okay. Way back in the day. Period piece. Right? Okay. Silly wigs. He catches him. Uh-huh. And he traps him in like a thing. A, a coffin or whatever, right? But he knows he's gonna like he, Van Helsing knows he's gonna grow old and he's gonna die. 
Mm-hmm. So what he does is he takes leeches and he sucks the blood out of Dracula mm-hmm. and injects it in himself, right? To It helps him live longer, right? Okay. So Caleb's on his phone. I know. It doesn't matter. He doesn't like the movie. No, okay. I'm looking up things that are related to this conversation. Okay, so, okay. So I'm not just like, Van I didn't Helsing just check out. then has a child and she winds up being one of the first beings born that was born this way, not bit. Right? Okay. So it's it's this cool twist on like, you know, and Van Helsing's like, I messed up, I shouldn't have stole this guy's blood, but he his whole mission was to try to figure out how to kill this thing. But he couldn't kill this thing because they linked it back to, like, uh, like Judas, like like the guy who like betrayed Jesus. That was like his curse to become a vampire. Hold on, so Dracula is Judas? Yeah, it's crazy. It's this a crazy is really movie. a leap here. That's the craziest leap, but it it's was. a cool movie. It was a leap. <laughs> <laughs> it's a cool movie, people. Okay. So it's back cheesy. to my hey. point hey. is that lines. Van Helsing needs to buzz the fuck off. Yes. Mind your own business. And he Worry does. About In this yourself. movie, he gets, he gets it. He gets, it's a, like the dialogue is very 2000. It's yes. a very dated movie, but the storyline and the comp- concept at the time was very original. Okay. The, the reason that I said that there was a rapper in it was because at the same time, <laughs> Snoop Dogg came out with Bones. The movie Bones oh, that yeah. he did. Yeah. And both of those were like the hyped video on oh, demand no. Hollywood Hollywood video releases. Leprechaun and in the it Hood. Was like, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That's what that movie was. It came out well, the same time. What's your favorite horror movie? Uh, my favorite horror movie is The Ugly. I've never seen this. It's a. It's Me neither. It's. It's. He a says that because he knows it's a foreign scary movie <laughs> that he knows I haven't seen, so I can't have an opinion on it. Oh man. Okay. Uh, what about um, you, Caleb? It's well, a, I think it's a whole. Uh, wait. It's. It, it was a. The reason why I like that movie is because it's a movie about a guy who hears voices and they basically make him do things, and he until he does it, they don't stop. It's like this psychological thing, like, but it was a government. Is it horror? Because you told me earlier no, that pretty... Silence of the Lambs. Was no, not no, hard. it's like a Which, it's like a horror movie. I gotta do a little IMDb look up on that. So, uh, but it was also like funded by like, uh, like I think I think it's like Venezuela or something yeah. like that. Like they funded like I don't know. I thought it was a cool thing Fair at enough. the time. It is not classified as oh that's Rotten Tomatoes. Hold on, it's classified as a thriller on Rotten Tomatoes. It is a technically thriller. it is a thriller. Yeah. Drama slash mystery. That's what I said, right? Yeah. 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 You did. Yeah. You were right. I was. I was just. I don't it's know. On the it's cusp. a fine line. It's on the cusp. Well, I think it sure. has. It has the feel the of it because really it's like. Me. I mean, it is. Yeah, it's got intense moments. Yeah. Well, I love. I think I. I love true crime now, but at the time, that was like the first time I realized, like, holy shit. There's fucking people that are wanting to kill people to do weird shit to them, not just like a regular old murder. Yeah, I um, I think that the best horror movie is The Conjuring, and that might be what like, oh, orphanage? it's new. I like The Orphanage. The Orphanage was awesome yep, too. That was a good movie. That was really good. Yep. Uh, I saw that in but, theaters, which was I, fun. I think that The Conjuring is the best horror movie. I think that it was. I think it's prime example of someone dedicating their time to be what it to be what they need to be to make a film that takes a lot from other horror movies and like presents it in a way as something new uh james wan i think is one of the greatest directors of all time i don't care what anybody says about that Uh, i'm gonna get closer to the microphone so that (laughs) Uh, James Wan is one, he did he did Saw. I don't I've never watched Saw. And he did uh he did Death Sentence. He did um he did, he's done a bunch of movies that I think are excellent. Uh See, I also like I like Evil Dead. Well, yeah. Oh, I fucking love It's just Evil like Dead. your favorite stuff like, though. I love but Evil Dead. I love Army of Darkness. Like, I think that's the greatest one. My favorite like horror like effects movie is The Thing. Oh fuck yeah! That's that my movie. favorite. So hold I'd on. I'd say that's my favorite horror so movie. So at the end, were they people? Like, what do you? What's yeah. your theory? That you don't think that they were things? No. Okay. If she had played the video game, she'd know that. 
said earlier, I don't have time for these things, Caleb. You know, because John Carpenter did say the video game was canon. I think it's a loaded question, though. When you ask someone, like, what, what's your favorite horror movie? It's like, well, what do you mean? Like, yeah. do you mean jump scares? Because if it's jump scares, then it's, it's the this. Ring. Yeah, it's the ring. Or if it's if it's yep. uh, slasher Honestly, movies, then it's every scary movie is a jump scare movie to me though because I startle incredibly easy. I like I me like I I like I like the slasher movies. I like the classic Friday the Thirteenth. Yeah, I like the I like nightmare feel of movies. I fucking love that. I love Nostalgia. Nightmare on Elm Street. I think th- as a series, Nightmare on Elm Street, you see this character grow from like shadows to this very comical dream kind of thing. Um, and and then there's movies like uh, The Skeleton Key, which is like oh yeah, that's mind-blowing movie. Like yep. you're just like, oh my God. That's a th- more of a this thriller is... though. And An it amazing. is amazing. A... That movie is- I've a... never seen it. This, it has Kate Hudson and John Hurt. Yeah, yeah. It's... I can see the movie poster in my brain. I've just, yeah. I never- It's and amazing, Skarsgård so or... underrated. Stellan Skarsgård? Mm, not the dad. No, no, no. No, not the Skarsgård. He's the... He was the bad guy in that flight Jodie Foster movie. He was in Garden State. He's like the best friend. What's that dude's name? Anyway. It's just... Um, uh, what was I just going to say? You know what movie I also love? Thriller, though. Not horror. Not horror. Uh, Disturbia. Yeah. I fucking love that movie. Yeah. yeah. With Shia LaBeouf. Yep. That is so scary. Yep. The dude from The Green Mile. <laughs> Like the bad guy. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, that's a great movie. I love that movie. Um, and then, like, classic horror movies, if, out of, like, the universal horror, uh, I think The Invisible Man is the best one. You're not the first person I've heard say that. The Invisible Man is the greatest classic Actually, movie. I was just interviewing a student um, to who wants to go to VAMP, and he says his favorite, he said his favorite was The Invisible Woman. He liked that. <laughs> okay. I mean, whatever. Did you, did you kick him out of your school? I mean, no, you don't have to kick him out. You can just, like, <laughs> you can, like, objectively tell him why that's completely incorrect. He backed incorrect. it up. I mean, I just thought it was yeah. interesting that... Uh, Is that one of the questions though? you asked when you... <laughs> no. No, I... Well, he just... Um, has I like seen... The Invisible Woman, but it's not better than... Do the you Invisible guys Man. Do you guys have, like, an application for consideration? Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah we have an application. Should totally put that on there if they want it. If, well, like... no, I, after they apply, I, I do an interview with them. So I, like, want to actually physically meet the person yeah the only thing or on the phone if they've come in for a tour here's the thing about the invisible man that bothers me to no end is that in the end of that movie he's he's walk all the cops have him like surrounded and he's walking around in the snow and the footprints are shoes they're shoes there's no way to explain it away it's like in harry potter when he's in, he doesn't have any clothes on. The thing is, he got to take all his clothes off. We get off, it. We get it. And he's walking around. There's shoe like suit shoes, but like what? dress shoes, walking around in the snow. It's like how did they? It's a movie mistake that blows my mind. It's out of place. Well, they probably got done, and they movie. were like, "How did you start? Oh. How did you get to the point where this? And it was not easy to do that effect when, back what then. What was the what was the filming schedule? It doesn't matter. It's like why? It doesn't <laughs> matter. Did that scene first. It doesn't matter. You'd be like, he doesn't like. Oh crap! It's just no, we're not how do you? It. It's just it's a thing. It's a it's a to me. It's the biggest movie mistake of all time. It took a lot to get huh. that effect back then. To get that effect, it was not easy for these people to do invisible feet walking around. It was not easy at all, and nobody thought. Wait a minute. Hang on here. Maybe I'm he the has director. misshapen feet and they are shaped like that on There's the There's no way to explain it. There is no way. It's a mistake. But other than that. What do you want? The Invisible Man. Up. The Invisible Man. <laughs> like who? The Invisible Man's scary because he, he'll he murder you. And you don't know he's in the room. So there's like the fear of it. And Claude Rains. And the creepiness. Claude Rains. Yeah. And Claude Rains does the performance, which is. I think in one of like the top 100 performances of all time, not even just in a horror movie, it's excellent. It has some humor in it. It has, um, and it has the morality backing up the story. So, I mean, it's about, it's about like hubris when it comes to science. And so it has this whole thing where it's like, you know, we're pushing the boundaries of science. So it kind of has some like, you know, it has an actual, it's not just a guy killing people. It's a thing where it's like, you know, well, you know, sometimes 
humans do things that can go terribly wrong. Like filming shoes in the snow. Yeah, yeah. Yep, yep. And so Maybe they and did Claude Rains's Claude Rains's performance in that is oh, it's so good. Get out if you'd only leave me alone. I could solve my problems. And just and they did won't you, stop knocking on his door. Like <laughs> Did you like Hollow Man? I thought that Hollow Man was an okay movie. I don't I know that why. Movie was awesome. I don't know why everyone hated it. I thought it was it's, so good. I yeah, saw that in the movie. They theater. still make fun of it. Weird. Dude, the effects in that movie blew my mind. Yeah. When you saw his veins and everything. Start Foreman. You know Form- what we're talking about? Hollow I Man with Kevin it. Bacon? I've never yeah. seen it. Yeah. You know, Stir of Echoes I with feel Kevin like Bacon. A sham he was in some I've good... not seen so many horror movies. But you it's can like... just be like, listen, Stir I also have a regular in every movie. I have a regular makeup program yeah. in my school as well, okay? We have a beauty makeup <laughs> yeah. course that like, <laughs> yeah. you know. Well, yeah. and that's when you were like, I guess we assume that you've seen all these horror movies, but some It's of probably the... a stereotype. It is, but but yeah. you know, some of the best you know, well maybe not no, best. I mean, some of the best makeups are not in horror movies too, like Harry Potter. Yeah, those goblin makeups are yeah. amazing. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, so it's I like think it's just it doesn't have to, to be horror. Yeah. It can be anything fantasy or yeah. you know, yeah, old age makeup. Old age even. makeup. Yeah. The Godfather is one of my favorite movies. Yeah, hmm. they did it. They uh, old age makeups like an art form that, when done badly, it's really bad. Yeah. Like bad. Have yeah. you seen the chronological cut of The Godfather? Yes. One, two, and three. Mm-hmm. That's my favorite one. Well, that's because it's in the in the uh, it's like the book. Yeah. Yeah. So, and I read I read the book, so mm-hmm. I appreciated that. They like re- it's, it's in The Godfather. You know how there's all those flashbacks? Mm-hmm. They cut it in order. The, well, yeah. So, yeah, so they did. It. Actually, I don't remember if in in the book if it's in chronological. I don't think it is. I think there's like flashbacks to yeah. it. But um, the second one, how it tells you all the background stuff, that's all in the the book i believe i liked it because although i watched it and read it all at once so sometimes it's a mush the 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 studio (laughs) made him the studio made him do it like that like he wanted to do it film it from the beginning yeah they were like no there's not enough time there's all this stuff and so later he went and like remade it recut it how he wanted it's like a director's cut pretty much actually the first time i ever saw it was that version yeah me too i I, when i turned it it was on hbo Mm -hmm. and i was like Damn, this is a long movie. And then I watched the. I didn't know that that was like a special thing. And then I watched it. Same. The regular way, and I was like, "This, this doesn't is make weird. sense." Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I feel the same way. I mean, I like them both, but um, yeah, I don't know the. I love the thing, and I love. I mean, I love classic horror stuff a lot. I love um, uh, but I mean, I can switch up gears and. You know, we can talk rom coms all day because we've yeah. seen all those too. I uh, no, I love the thing too. <laughs> yeah, fucking awesome movie. The thing, and uh, that movie made single handedly made me like attracted to things that take place on like bases in the in an Arctic environment. Interesting. That's because it's terrifying. Yeah, I think it's stranded. and I think it's cool. Like yeah. you hear like the howling outside, and you know it's super cold, and then there's. Just the buildings are cool because they're different. That's like anything that takes place on a boat. Yeah. Fucking scary. I, have you ever watched like the show Speed I two. Survived? Have you ever watched that show? No. The show no, on Lifetime. My, no. my son watches that. I Survived? Yeah. How old's your son? He reads the books, too. There's, like, books. I Survived pearl harbor or like yeah no that's like it's, more intense like i survived getting kidnapped I and think, shot in the head yeah, twice. yeah different thing dude i think it's called i survive yeah. yeah well i mean it's very possible because it's like crazy stories mm. or like people being on a sh- on a boat in the middle of like the ocean and a hurricane hits mm. yeah and they survive that yeah he reads like, those that's Ugh. old those books were coming out when we were uh like kids yeah i had one on an avalanche yeah. I survived, and then underneath it, it says like an avalanche. Yeah, yeah, and then, yeah. Uh, to this day, uh, the stranded on a raft. I know like weird facts from reading that book, like the turtle's blood is like ninety percent water. So if you can catch a turtle, you can like cut its throat and drink it as water, and you Look won't get that. sick. <laughs> you won't get sick. Stuff like that. Here I was like, thinking I was just if wasting only my I night. Could lasso and, a now, turtle. and now I know. I learned something today. Yeah, I well, thought like, I was just wasting like my night. Like deep sea turtles, though, they are one of the 
the animals in the ocean that come up to the surface no matter where you are in the ocean. That's what this book said. And they were like, so, and then they showed you how to, they told you how to make a little fishing line. And told you what? Like, well, they, the book said, it was like, you know, take a thread from your shirt. And like, they told you how to make something on your person. And it was like, and you can catch this turtle then their blood is water. I still remember that. I was like, must've been nine when I read that book. And like, that's, it was like, huh? I don't know why that, th- that fact stuck with me, but I anyway. survived by drinking turtle blood. Yep. And also with the avalanche one, it was to spit to see what direction you are if you're caught under the snow. Because hmm. if you've been caught in an avalanche and you've tumbled all around in the snow, you don't w- know which way's up. It's a hawk a loogie. So if you spit, you can tell. It huh. just hits you in the face. Yeah. That is scary. <laughs> all right. So, well, you've just wasted. Horror. You just wasted <laughs> another. Life. You just wasted an hour and a half. Yeah. <laughs> talking to two idiots. <laughs> the first guest on our show. Um, yeah. Yeah, that was fun. That was fun. I think we went a little off topic there a couple that's times. That's all. That's what this show has been. Okay. Okay. Hey, so. Hey. But real quick before we wrap up. Uh, what's your website? Um, it's vampfx.com. Okay. Mm-hmm. And um, do you have a theme song? Uh, you guys are writing it for me right now. Yeah. Go. Spice Girls has a song. The Vamp. Ladies of Vamp. Mmm. Hmm. <laughs> I think I'd have to pay for that. I was hoping you would just come up no, with something on the spot. No, just use it. Just use it. No, you would have to pay. Yeah. <laughs> come up. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Learn um, makeup at Vamp. That's it. <laughs> yeah. Nailed it. And like, but anyway, I've been to the school. It's awesome. There's a big deficiency when it comes to applied, like makeup and effects schools. And the other thing too is that I'm not a big fan. And this might turn into like another topic. I know you're wrapping up or whatever, but uh. Bonus I think content. that I th- yeah, this is the bonus. I think that <laughs> makeup artists have this weird, these weird egos, and I think that most makeup schools that have a name attached to it are. I just feel like those are the epitome of like the ego-driven makeup like, artist, <laughs> and like I really, I mean, it, and there's other makeup schools, right? Like, <sighs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I've never met Joe Blasco, but I've heard that he's very like ego centered. I don't know him. Like Bo, I, I don't even care. I, Bo I have nothing Jas- to do with Jasco. That. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Like jo, there's Joe Blasco, and like it's things that like you know I've heard Som makeup Tabini. artists be like, and I've Som heard Tabini, it, right? I've, <laughs> I've heard it from a ton of makeup artists that it's like, oh, Joe Blasco, that school sucks because he's like an old school makeup artist who refuses to, you know, teach new techniques and all this stuff. And I don't know whether that's true or not, but just by working around makeup artists, I know that they can totally be like that. And one of the nice things about going to your school was that nobody was like that. Thank you. Yeah. If um, it had been named like the Heather Files Visual Effects School, I'd be well, like, my hmm, name's, she's probably one of them. My name is so yeah. big, people know me. You know, so. <laughs> but uh, I mean. No, I mean, but that's what we, we wanted to be. Um, like very tight knit and Mm -hmm. everybody be on the same level. We're very, I'm very family based. Mm -hmm. So I wanted the school to feel like that too. Mm -hmm. And um, I don't think having an ego gets you really anywhere. Yeah. Well, it's just, I don't know. I don't care if people have egos just. Maybe that's why Bruce Willis stinks to you now because in the beginning he was pure. And now he's like. I don't mind if people have an ego. I just mind if they're just weird jerks <laughs> yeah i don't care if people have egos at all yeah. i mean <laughs> it's me talking <laughs> but uh if you're just a jerk to people no we don't like that no be nice normal and and also if you're holding people back with your ego by not teaching them something they want to learn because you know no that's not the way it's done what what <laughs> luckily our teachers are super obsessed with makeup and even the stuff we don't go over mm-hmm. they want to 
help if people want to learn how yeah. to do acrylic eyes and weren't you know if they weren't like we'll if I didn't get the sense of that when I because I've been to the school multiple times you know annoying them and making me making them show me things I if I had that sense I'd be like ugh but well thank you for not that. being like ugh I didn't have that sense um, so go check it out check, check out, out Vamp what is it Vamp FX Vamp F x.com frank that's our instagram xavier too. x yes vamp .com. FX. yeah yep Va it's hey cool. what does vamp stand for vocational academy of makeup and prosthetics it's the longest name in the gotcha. world gotcha it's cool no though. that's cool though yeah yeah i, I just, like it i love vampires so i thought of the name vamp and uh -huh. then i made the made acronym out of that <laughs> i was like i will fit this well, I the first time I saw it, and then I saw it, you know what it stood for. I was like, you had to do it that way. Yeah. You couldn't. There's no way I'm going to start an effects school. And I'm going to call it this, 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 and this. Oh, oh man! Just coincidentally, it made the <laughs> words vamp. I know. Well, yeah. <laughs> well, yeah I don't oh, know. shucks. Yeah. Yes. I'm. I'm, an, I'm just obsessed with vampire stuff. So I was like, that would be a dope name. And then I was like, right. I, I don't know. I was like writing it in a notebook. And I was like, I'm surprised oh, you didn't pick Twilight as your favorite movie. I didn't want to tell the whole world about that, <laughs> but I love that movie and I own it. My yeah. friend just went to Forks and she brought me back a bunch of like Forks, Dirt? Washington oh. gear, stuff, hmm. weird souvenirs. Huh? They didn't even film the movie there. Yeah. It was filmed. Actually, all the uh, scenes at La Push Beach were filmed at the Goonies Beach. Yep. Oregon. Mm hmm. Yeah. There you know. Now you know. Cool. Very awesome. Well, until next time, this has been the Creative Rant brought to you by Spectacle Photo. Spectaclephoto.com. Yeah. Dot com. Leave comments below. Subscribe. Do whatever you're supposed to do on whatever you're listening to this on. It'd be great. <laughs> yeah. Anyway. Later. All right. Thanks. <laughs> Creative rant.